Great to have you. My name is Dr. Jack Vogg. I'm a world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 11 books with number 12 on the way. This is Real Talk with Dr. V. I do a weekly broadcast for you guys Sunday morning. Our topic today is very controversial, but I promise you it's the truth. The topic is why you should not exercise after weight loss surgery. So here's what we're going to do. We're, there is a truth. I want to give you a truth, and here's the truth. Most things, grab a pen and paper, take notes. Most things that we think are treats are actually punishments. Isn't that the truth? That is a truth. You cannot argue with me on this. Most of the things that we think are treats are actually punishments. I'll give you an example. You say, hey, you know, I'm really stressed out. Um, I'm gonna I've had a hard week. I'm going to treat myself to this cookie or this cupcake. And what you don't understand is you think it's a treat, but it's taking a toll on your body. And it's so that cookie or that cupcake is actually a punishment. You might say, I've had a really hard day at work. I'm going to treat myself to a glass of wine or a margarita. And before you know it, what you don't realize is if you do that enough times, that margarita becomes an actual punishment to you. I'll give you another example. A one night stand. You think a one night stand is a treat, right? Until you wake up the next morning with crabs. You know what I'm talking about. You wake up the next morning with an STD. You got a drippy penis. I mean, it's bad. It's bad. So you thought that one night stand was a treat, but it was really a punishment. Now, <laughs> when it comes to the obese, for obese people, the gym is actually a punishment. Isn't that the truth? The gym is a punishment. It is. Who wants to go to the gym when you're, when you're morbidly obese? You're 250, 300 pounds. Your clothes don't fit. You know, you don't have good fitting workout clothes. You're nervous. You're self-conscious about your fat rolls. You walk into this gym. There's all this equipment. You don't even know how to use it because like most of us, you haven't really been in the gym in a long time or ever. You see all these fit people, these men that are working out, and then, you, you know, it's a punishment. Okay? So the first thing we are going to agree on right now is that most things that we think are treats are actually punishments. Okay? And I'm going to explain to you in this live broadcast, one, why they're punishments, two, um, why you should not exercise after weight loss surgery, and then three, when can you start exercising again after you have weight loss surgery? And I have specific criteria. Sound good? So, let's get going. In my clinic, we have a concept called fat brain. I came up with this concept. The obese people have fat brain versus skinny brain, or you can call it a healthy brain or whatever. But I call it skinny brain. So here's the problem, okay? The fat brain, the obese person, thinks about the gym, like, gym equals weight loss. The fat person, the fat brain says, I need to go to the gym so I can lose weight. But that's not the truth. Right? The problem is the gym is not good for losing weight. You will not lose weight from going to the gym. The skinny brain says, lose weight? If I want to lose weight, you have to change your food. The only way to lose weight is to change what you eat. Period. Because the gym is not good for losing weight. You cannot exercise off a bad diet. And every trainer will tell you this. Everybody will tell you this. Going to the gym where you burn four or 500 calories, then you go eat a Snickers bar that has 500 calories in it, or McDonald's uh, hamburger, which has like, you know, 900 calories in it. You've undone everything that you had to do at the gym, right? So the fat brain says, I, get, I need to lose weight, so I go to the gym. The skinny brain says, if I want to lose weight, I need to change what I eat. And that's the truth.
Number two, the fat brain will say that the gym is a must. I must go. I must go. Because this is what's expected of me. Like our society has somehow glorified going to the gym like some act of like self-love or something that you must do. It's not. Think about that. The gym, the concept of a gym has only been around since the 80s. I, I know there were workout gyms like back in the 50s, 60s, but they haven't been really popular until the 80s. And so it's only been within the last 30 years. And now we seem to think we've, we've like driven this into our head that in order to be healthy, you have to go to the gym. And that's not true. The skinny brain says, I'm going to go to the gym because I have a defined goal I want to meet. Let's say I want to get fit. Like, I want to do a competition. I want to, um, uh, I, I'm going to run a marathon. I'm going to tell you, like, for, here's another funny skinny brain example. Um, uh, Kasparov, Gary Kasparov, like, probably the best chess player who's ever played, he won, like, he was the world chess champion for decades. Um, and, the, and he said the reason why was because he went to the gym, because he got physically fit. You know, chess nerds are not known for being physically fit. Let's just, I'm a chess nerd, so. Uh, but he knew that in order to compete in a tournament that was like four or five days long, he had to have physical stamina. So he went to the gym for a specific endurance goal. Does that make sense? So the skinny brain says, I'm going to go to the gym because I have a goal or a mission or something like that not because I'm trying to lose weight. That's a very different um, perspective. Okay. And what the gym ends up doing because of, um, because like this is a must, it becomes guilty. Like if you don't go, fat brain makes you feel guilty, right? Like, oh, I know I should have gone to the gym, but I, don't, I didn't. Right? The skinny brain says, this is a pleasure. I'm doing something good for my body, my cardio. Right? I'm, I, I'm, I'm going after a goal. Okay? It's not a must. It's a, I want to. But when you make this gym a must and you don't go, you feel guilty because you feel like you're letting down your weight loss, which is stupid because the gym's not good for weight loss. So you're, the perspective is all wrong. Okay. So, so the gym, when you're obese, is a punishment. Y'all got that? It's a punishment. So, I'm going to go to the reason. All right. So, perioperatively, perioperative, this is around the time of your surgery. And I'm going to arbitrarily say about one to six months post-op why you shouldn't go, Okay. One just and and that's just a kind of a window, right? Um, and and here's a reason why you can't. You, the fat brain says again, um, you know, I just had surgery. My surgery went well. I'm feeling pretty good. I need to go to the gym. Reliving this punishment. Think about this, right? And I know you want to go. Because you just had surgery, you have this momentum, you're excited, you're trying to do all this stuff to change your life. Your fat brain says, the gym is healthy, I need to go to the gym, I'm motivated, alright? So there's this motivation factor to go, right? And there's also a sense, I promise you, it's a sense of guilt, like judgment. Like, people know that I've had weight loss surgery, so I will feel guilty if I don't go to the gym because that's what's expected for me for good health, right? But here's the main, the skinny reason uh, why you should not go. So if you're paying attention, I mean, share the broadcast right now because this is the key reason why you should not go to the gym. Um, you can not consume enough calories. When you've just had weight loss surgery, you cannot consume enough calories to make going to the gym efficient, to get the goal that you're after, period. 
you just had your stomach reduced to the size of a sleeve, right? Like what I do, or a gastric bypass. If you're watching, you have gastric bypass, it's the same thing. You cannot consume enough calories to make it an efficient workout. You're not going to get what you need from nutritionally to make it worth your time. Every trainer will tell you this. If you want to go to the gym, you need to up your calories. You need to be able to um, give your muscles the building block it needs to hypertrophy. And when you've just had weight loss surgery, you cannot consume enough calories. Isn't that the truth? That is the truth. Number two, hunger. The fat brain says, I never want to be hungry. But the truth of the matter is, and this is what I teach my patients, y'all write this down. It is natural to be hungry. It is unnatural to be full. Y'all get that? It is natural to be hungry. It is unnatural to be full. But the promise of weight loss surgery and what a lot of people think is that you'll never be hungry again. Well, that's not true. Because here's number two. When you go to the gym, draw three arrows up. Up, up, up. Hunger. Your increased physical activity will radically, dramatically increase your hunger. But that's what you don't want. You don't want your hunger right after surgery. See? Because for a lot of the people who've had weight loss surgery, they struggle with hunger. And one of the promises is that for a brief period at least, you're, you're, you should have some form of hunger control. It doesn't matter if you had a sleeve or bypass, right? And during that window, that opportunity, that's when you need to change these eating behaviors because it's the food that's going to cause you to lose weight. The changes in the food. But you think in your fat brain and society tells you, you must go to the gym. We're all watching you. So you feel guilty. You go to the gym and then you wonder, oh my God, why am I hungry all the time? Oh my God, why am I hungry? And so now you have increased hunger. And because you can't consume enough calories, you feel like shit. You're tired a lot of times. You're dragging ass. You don't get that boost that you think you need, that you're supposed to get from the gym. Not right after surgery. Does that make sense? These two criteria are the main physiological reason why I don't want my patients going to the gym right after surgery. Okay? Right after surgery. You cannot consume enough calories to make it an efficient workout. Period. Every physiologist, every... Um, trainer will tell you that you need to consume more calories but the problem is your trainer or people who the average person or your buddy who's trying to tell you to go to the gym they don't understand weight loss surgery they don't understand weight loss surgery they don't understand the fact that you just can't eat that much now most other surgeons buy into the dieting thing where like exercise is good for you you need to exercise but they haven't put it together that says hey they don't get a good workout because they can't consume, patients can't consume enough calories. So there are lots of programs that tell patients to go back to the gym. And I'm here to tell you, I will argue with any surgeon. I'm telling you this is the truth. Because every one of my patients who try to go back to the gym, before I tell them to, if they try to go back to the gym, they will always come back complaining of increased hunger and weight stall. Number four, it will stall, weight stall. It will stall your weight loss. Weight loss stall. It will stall your weight loss. I promise you. For all of these reasons. Okay. Y'all got that? Now. Why? So the question then becomes. When can I go back to the gym? That's what y'all really want to know. When can I go? When can I go to gym? Dr. Vong, when can I go to the gym? Okay. And let me tell you, this is the answer. I have specific criteria. One. Is your head straight? Is your head straight? Your head has got to be straight. If you are still struggling with depression and anxiety, if you're still like upset about something that happened to you in your childhood, 
Going to the gym is not going to fix those problems. And in fact, going to the gym is only going to detract you from trying to work on those deeper issues. You've got to get your head straight, right? The only way to deal with those past stuff is to do some introspection, get some therapy, write it down in a journal, right? Go seek some um, mental health stuff, learn about self-improvement, spend time in, with yourself. When you go to the gym, it's a distraction. Gym equals distraction. You're not working on your bad marriage. You're not working. The gym does not help you work with the loss of your mom or whatever reason that you think caused you to become obese, which are multi multiple. I mean, so it's just a distraction and it's the wrong distraction. See, it does not give you no, it won't give you weight loss. So it's not even after what you want. It's not going to give you the results you want. So the first question, Dr. Vaughn, can I go back to Jim? You have to say, is your head on straight? Is your head on straight? I'll give you a couple of examples. I tell my patients to uh, do side-by-side -side before and after photos so they can see the difference in their weight loss journey. So if they started at 300, I'll give you 300, they want to take a picture of that. Their current weight is like, you know, 220, somewhere like that. They've lost 70, 80, 90, 100, 200 you know, pounds. And then they'll post something like, here's my side-by-side -side selfies. I don't really see a difference. Even though they've lost like 80 pounds. And everybody else can see the difference. But they say, I can't see a difference. Their head's not on straight. They can't go to the gym. If they, if, if they can't see the difference in 80 pound weight loss in a side-by-side photo, going to the gym is only going to exacerbate it. It's only going to make it worse. Because they're not going to go to, they're not going to see a difference in the gym either. And then they're going to feel like they failed at that too. So continually, you have a continual cycle of failure that hurts you. Number two, is your nutrition straight? This is important. Because I told you, if you want to go to the workout, you're going to need to increase your nutrition because it's going to drive your hunger up. And if your nutrition's not straight, if you're still snacking, if you are still eating chips, if you are still like um, eating fast food and you try to go to the gym, it's only going to increase your hunger. Now you're going to increase your cravings for junk. I promise you because your body's looking for more calories for the gym. Cravings will increase for junk. So if your nutrition is not straight, if you're not doing a green smoothie for breakfast, you don't have that down yet. If you think tofu is gross, if you think fish is disgusting, if you're just eating fast food, you're going to screw up. You're going to screw up. Does that make sense? Going to the gym will screw this up. I promise you. Every single time. Every single one of my patients, this is the problem. You know, so if you're right now, if you're one of these people that are trying to go, that your weight loss has stalled, so your fat brain says you need to go to the gym, so now you're going to the gym two times a day, but somehow you suddenly have all these cravings for like salt and pickles and chips. Stop going to the gym. Does that make sense, y'all? Okay, number three. Can you afford a trainer? If you cannot afford a trainer, you do not go to the gym. Think about that. Most obese people are, um, even though they're big on the outside, are nutritionally deplete on the inside. That's one. And number two, most people who are obese are really weak, right? Their legs and calves and stuff might be strong from carrying that weight, but I'm telling you, your core is weak. You, don't, you have weak back muscles. That's why you guys hurt in the lower back a lot. You, have, you don't really move your arms that much because you, you don't have mobility. You need a trainer who will work with you on mobility, stability, right? And if you can't afford a trainer, you got to do physical therapy. Go talk to your doctor about starting physical therapy. Don't go to the gym. You have a medical issue. We've all agreed on that. So the medical answer for when you are debilitated is physical therapy. 
It's not the gym. We send patients who are debilitated to physical therapy. So a therapist can get you stabilized, can work on your mobility. Because if you just go to the gym, you just had weight loss surgery, you're 300 pounds, now you're 250 pounds, and you try to go to the gym by yourself, I promise you, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. You're going to pull your back, you're going to throw out your knee. Something, you're going to... It happens every single time. It drives me nuts. Don't go to the gym. If you cannot afford a trainer, you cannot go to the gym. Now, if you, most gym memberships, if you go, they will, um, uh, they will offer some free training or sessions. Take them up on that. If there's a higher level of membership, okay, if there's a higher level of membership that offers you more trainer sessions, go get that, right? But if you can't afford a trainer, you can't go to the gym. You're better off saving your $30 a month for your gym membership and using it on your food. Because the food is the key. The food is the key for weight loss. Does that make sense? Or, or save your money, don't go to the gym, take your 30 bucks and get an online course. Or buy a book that's going to help you with your therapy. Or um, go, you know, go do something to improve yourself. It's not the gym, guys. I promise you it's not. Okay? And I'm going to give you a couple of myths real quick. I gave you one already, right? Which is that um, uh, the gym is not good for weight loss. So people think going to the gym is good for weight loss. It's not. So not good for weight loss. That's one myth. You should not go to the gym expecting weight loss. One, two, um, stress relief. A lot of patients go... Well, I like to go to the gym because it helps me with my stress, Dr. Vaughn. What about that? My answer to you is this. Where does your stress come from? Where do you feel stress? You feel stress in your brain. It starts in the brain because you can't handle your argument or your marriage or your work environment. You can't handle your um, co-workers talking behind your back. You can't handle your naysayers. You can't handle your family members talking shit about you and it's causing you to stress. Where does that come from? It's your brain. You need to work on your stress in your brain, in your head. You gotta get your head straight. Does that make sense what I'm telling y'all? And I get it. You go to the gym, you have release of endorphins, you feel all right. But the second you go back into work or your home life and it's stressful, what happens? Boom, it's there again. Your stress is back. Going to the gym was a distraction. It did not fix your stress. So what you got to do is start to really handle the situation. Then go to the gym for other goals. Number three, this one really drives me nuts. Loose skin. A lot of obese patients think that going to the gym will fix their loose skin or prevent loose skin. Let me ask you a question. Are there muscles in skin? Answer is no. There's no muscles in there. It's not going to tighten your loose skin. And what happens is you think it will, or someone has told you it will, the average person, so you feel guilty to go to the gym, and then you get frustrated because you realize it doesn't fix the loose skin. You might or might not have loose skin. Now, let me tell you, some people say, hey, Dr. Vaughn, I'm worried about having loose skin. I said, shit, you got to get there first. You got to earn your loose skin. Not everyone gets loose skin. Why? Because they don't lose enough, or they lost and they regained. Now all you're worrying about loose skin doesn't matter because you regained all your weight. Does that make sense? Your loose skin is a badge of honor. Because one third of patients don't get there. You wear that badge of honor proudly, man. That's what I'm telling you. And when you get there, you have loose skin, you go to the gym, you build muscles, now a plastic surgeon can remove that loose skin. Right? Because if you go to the gym thinking that you're going to tighten your loose skin, all you're going to notice is when you do a bicep curl, you're going to have a big hanging wing. You might have nice biceps, but still, you're still going to have your little bat wing. And now you're really frustrated. Now you're really upset with your weight loss journey. Oh, I should have, you know, I was better. I liked my body better when I was fat. At least I didn't have this hanging loose skin. Well, what'd you expect? Right? That's, that's your penalty. That's the price you pay for being obese. Hating it, it's not going to fix it. You got to fight for your plastic surgery removal. You got to save up money for your plastic surgeon. 
You see all these myths? So I'm going to write this down. The gym is nothing more than a box of um, unfulfilled promises. The gym is nothing but a box of unfulfilled promises. They promise you a healthy life. They promise you weight loss. They promise you, car you know, fitness. And it's not. Your health and your fitness starts on your dinner plate. It starts with fresh fruits and veggies. It's not the gym. We got to quit buying into this culture, right? The gym for, is not sustainable long term for most people. That's why they shouldn't go to the gym. You can't do it long enough. The average person cannot go to the gym for long enough to see the health benefits that it promises, the weight loss that it promises, the shape, the six-pack abs, the pecs, the, all that stuff. You have to go for years. If you want to go to the gym to accomplish that, that figure, that how you think you look inside your head, that body you want inside your head, that's five years in the making, five years away. I promise you it is. It's too long. Most people don't have that sort of um, time and endurance, right? So that's another myth about the gym, right? That's another unfulfilled promise. If you don't have this stuff straight, you cannot go back to the gym. Otherwise, it's just a punishment. And you're reliving the punishment over and over and over again, right? Every time you go to the gym, you're reliving that punishment, that failure. I failed. I failed. I hate this. I feel guilty. I don't want to do this. I don't have time. And that's when you start getting off track because you don't see the weight loss results. So now you're starting to doubt your surgery. So now you're like, well, why do I even bother doing this and not getting the results I want? Because the gym is not the answer for the results that you want. The answer for what you want starts on your plate and it starts in your head by valuing yourself, getting your head straight that, so that your choices that you make on your plate are correct. Sound good? Thank you guys very much for watching. Dr. Duck Vong, this has been Real Talk with Dr. V. I know it's a very controversial topic. See you next time.